Okay, rule two. Uh, it doesn't matter what you, where you think the air should go, it's still going to go the way it wants to go. So try and figure out where the air is going to be able to go and then uh, work with it in that area. And so, for instance, if you find there's a lot of airflow on the top of a port, that's the busy area. You don't go grinding on the bottom of the port where it's a low flow area because all you do is you make a lazy port. Do not want that. We'll, we'll come to the reason for that. Uh, well, I'll impress you on how important it is not to do that. So first off, you cannot force the air to go where it doesn't want to go, which brings me to this point. The reason you can't force it to go where it doesn't want to go is it's heavier than you think it is. And, and port velocities, even professional head porters, by and large, pay lip service to port velocities. They say, well, you've got to keep the velocity up. And it sounds like they've given it some importance, but I can categorically say they have not given it enough importance. And I'm going to show you right now why. That's a 100-foot cube of air, 100 by 100 by 100. And that's a Chevy Sierra extended cab truck on, on the top. So you can see the scale of it. The weight of that cube is 38 tons. Now, I'll give you an example here. I did some calculations on one of uh, Dick's Pro Stock engines. And at 10,000 RPM, the velocity of the air in the intake port from the plenum to the valve has the same energy as a pellet from a high-powered air rifle that will put a, a, a 177 pellet through a, the skinny side of a 2x4. Right? That means that that air has got enough energy that you wouldn't want to be hit by it. So that's what rams the air in after the piston's on the way up. That velocity is, is so high, if, if you allow it to be high by not oversizing the port, that it can generate about a, well, it's easy to make seven pound positive pressure at the end of the induction, the piston's induction stroke. If you, the energy in the port is equal to half mv squared, that's half the mass times the velocity squared. So if you make the port 10% too big, you have just killed 22% of the energy in that port. So what I want to emphasize on you is that it is not a good idea to work on the basis that ports must be better the bigger they are. That is a fallacy. They work best when they are the right size. So never assume, like we did earlier on with big blocks, that if some's good, more's better, and too much is just right. Because with port volume, if some is good, more may be better, and too much is definitely not good. Now, I'm going to show an example here. This is, a, this is a Dart 170 out of the box versus a 170 ported versus a 195. There's the flow figures. You'll notice that with even the basic porting job, what it's done is it's increased the flow, but the smaller port loses out to the bigger port only right at the very top. Well, we're not lifting the valve 700, so we've now got airflow in the more in the envelope, lift envelope that we're going to use. Well, how does that pay off? Let's have a look. We'll, we'll just check the exhaust first, but, but that ported 170 is done exactly as I, I say in my book, and as I'm detailing here. Very simple. Skinny down the guide boss, blend in the seats, Blend out the short side turn and clean up the body, main body of the port. So that, and that was the result there. Same on the exhaust. The green one is the uh, 170 ported. Now let's have a look and see what this does on the dyno. I think this will interest most of you. The black curve, this had a Comp 285 hydraulic roller. It's a f three, uh, it's the, the engine's 306. It's a 30 over, 20 over a small Ford. Here's our stock curve. The ASCAST, straight out of the box, 170, for, for something that's out of, let me get this side, for something straight out of the box showed a really big increase. Down here, it was worse, all the way up until here. And then it was marginally better up at the top. Now let's look at the ported 170 versus a lot of them. Look at this curve here. 102 horsepower increase over stock. 
At 6,000 RPM, where it peaked out, it's 100 foot-pounds better than stock. You know, this is like having a nitrous bottle. You don't have to fill. You need to sell your guys a cylinder head before you sell them nitrous, because they've got this on tap all the time. They don't have to turn it on, and they don't have to refill it. 